Hello Labas Privia! There's a misconception that being a YouTuber is as simple as pulling out your iPhone and recording. Let's face it, YouTube is a business. You can make a lot of money off of this platform. And if you want to get anywhere on YouTube, it's going to take some sort of investment, just like any other business. I'm going to share with you sort of my story on YouTube and how I've invested $7,472.93 without making a single dollar in return. I'll also explain how having the mentality of only needing an iPhone and a computer to be a YouTuber is what really set me back from growing my channel. Let's do it. First, let's talk about how much I've spent on equipment and why I made these purchases. Keep in mind that I made some of these investments a few years ago, so they're not gonna cost the same now than they did back then. Also, I'm going to link every single piece of equipment that I mentioned in this video all in the description, so if you wanna check it out further, check out the specs, or if you wanna purchase it, all the links are down there. It all started off with my first camera kit, and all the items that came with it includes a Canon T3i body, a Canon kit lens, a camera strap, some random cables including the battery charger, a 16 gigabyte SD card, and the bag to carry it all. This cost me approximately $500. This one was by far the biggest investment. After investing in a camera kit, I also bought a cheap tripod off of Amazon for $20. This setup on its own was enough for me to start my very first videos. Although I had spent over $500, the quality still wasn't that great. For the most part, this was just due to me not really knowing how to use the camera because it was the first camera I had ever owned and I didn't know how to configure the settings whatsoever. It was still a great start though. My next upgrade was a second 16 gigabyte SD card for $23 from Walgreens. I was having a lot of issues with not having enough video storage and it was really, really annoying. So I just finally decided to get a second SD card so I wouldn't have to deal with that issue anymore. That was the last upgrade that I made for a while. Although I could afford it, I decided to go cheap and just not upgrade anymore and deal with the limitations that my current setup had. Like $400 tripod. Got that duct tape holder. One of the limitations I had was that I was only able to record during the day. And when I had to record at night, I had to improvise by using a lamp and then stacking it on a bunch of different objects so that it was at the right height. And <laughs> it just w didn't look good. It was a horrible setup. Another limitation I had is my SD card. Because I didn't really know anything about cameras, I didn't know that your SD card has to be a certain speed for your camera to use it properly. The issue that the SD card would cause is that every single time I would click record on the camera, after I would go back to my position and get ready, it would just stop recording automatically. And it would do this over and over and over, and every single time I'd have to get out of position and back into position. This SD card problem, along with the whole recording setup process, often frustrated me and it really ruined my mood before the video which is bad because in YouTube videos you need to be in a good mood you need to have positive energy otherwise people will pick up on that and they're not gonna watch your videos now the last and also the biggest limitation that I had from that whole setup was my video storage capabilities it was pretty much impossible for me to create a video over seven minutes long because not only would I run out of storage on the SD cards but I would also run out of storage on my MacBook having only around 30 gigabytes of storage was not nearly enough for the type of videos that I wanted to edit and create a cheap setup will produce cheap results. I wanted my videos to have a high quality look to them that my setup wasn't capable of doing. This forced me to make up for it by spending several hours finding ways around the limitations the cheap way. After four years of stopping and starting YouTube, it wasn't until five months ago that I realized my setup was the reason I couldn't stick with YouTube for long without losing motivation and burning out. My next investment was a one terabyte Lacey hard drive for $64.94. Now that I was no longer limited on how long I could make a video, I had to tackle my lighting problem. I was still at the mercy of my windows and the amount of natural light they would let in at the right angles. So I decided to buy a newer ring light for $99.99. Finally, I was able to record anywhere and anytime I wanted, no matter how bad the natural lighting was. At this point, I had everything that I needed to make sure that I wouldn't run into any more headaches or limitations when it came to video making. Everything that I purchased after was either to boost the quality of the video or to make it even easier for me to make videos. The rest of my setup includes a 128GB SD card for $30, a second external hard drive with 2TB for $60, a lav mic for $30, an f1.8 Canon lens for $90, and lastly, $30 worth of background music subscriptions. Now, if you also include the cost of my editing softwares like Final Cut Pro, which is $299, and Photoshop CS6, which is about $119.88, the total cost of my YouTube setup is $1,366.81. 
but that's not entirely the truth. I was actually able to get Final Cut Pro and Photoshop for free, so the actual cost was $947.93. And if you're interested as to how I got those both for free, just comment down below and I'll explain it to you. That was how much I invested into my whole recording and editing setup. So at this point, you might be wondering, Brandon, where did you spend the remaining $6,525? I think we can all agree that time is one of the most valuable things that a human possesses. So where that $6,525 $525 comes from is the cost of the time that I've put into every single video from start to finish and posted it on my YouTube channel. With that said, here's how I got that number. Where I live, minimum wage is $12.50, so no matter where I work, my time is at least worth $12.50 an hour. For the past 14 videos I made, it took me an average of 13 hours to produce each video from start to finish. 14 times 13 equals 182 hours, and 182 hours of work times 12 50 equals $2,275. I also have 34 other videos that each took an average of 10 hours to make. 34 videos times 10 hours equals 340 hours. 340 hours times 1250 equals $4,250. If you add the $2,275 from my recent 14 videos to that, the grand total is $6,525. Okay, so what did all that mean? As I've stated before, I haven't made a single dime off of YouTube, meaning that the 522 hours that I've put into making YouTube videos was for completely free. This all ties back into opportunity cost. For the most part, we all have the freedom of choosing how we use our time. This means that I gave up the opportunity to work 522 hours at a minimum wage job making $12.50 an hour to make YouTube videos instead, which means that YouTube has costed me $6,525 worth of my time, which that might kind of sound like I'm complaining but I'm not because that was all my choice like I made the decision to put all that time and effort into videos because I love doing it of course I want to make money but that's not the main reason that I do YouTube I'll get a little more into that in just a second but first let me establish exactly how much making YouTube videos has costed me now that we know where that six thousand five hundred twenty five dollars came from we can add that to our equipment cost and we get a grand total of seven thousand four hundred seventy two dollars and ninety three cents what is the message that I'm trying to get across to you in this video? If you decide that you're going to do something in life, you have to fully commit. With something like YouTube, the odds are automatically against you. Not only are there thousands and thousands of other people out there trying to do the exact same thing as you and succeed on YouTube, you're also going to have to get used to working for free for several months or even a few years. And now getting back to what I was talking about earlier as to why I'm okay with spending so much time for free, it's because I have a passion for video making. So whatever business that you decide to commit to, you have to make sure that you have some sort of passion for it. Like this video if you learned something new from it. and also subscribe to the channel if you want to learn how to become a better version of yourself and also you'll be hit with some entertaining videos once in a while thanks again for watching it's now 2020 happy new year let's crush it let's hit our goals and far beyond them i'll see you in my next video peace